If Haskell gets on this list, I am fucked. I'm gonna be here for hours. Welcome back to another day of Advent of Code, where I more or less torture myself on stream by picking a language at random off of this wheel. And if I get it wrong on the first try when I submit my solution, chat gets to replace the language on this wheel with something of their choosing. A rule that I made up and will likely soon regret. Let's do it. Rust. Languages like C are the reason for about 70% of security vulnerabilities in code. I know whenever I say that, people are like, oh no, it's a skill issue. Like people are the programmers that write bad code. And I'm like, all right, dude, cool, got it. Like tell that to Microsoft, tell that to Oracle, where, you know, these companies, multi-billion dollar companies that have the best programmers and continue to put out software that has vulnerabilities. People are going to make mistakes. So languages that prevent you, that do not allow you to make mistakes are kind of cool. So I like Rust. Day three gear ratio. You and the elf eventually reach a gondola lift station. He says a gondola lift will take you up to a water source, but this is as far as he can bring you. You go inside. It doesn't take long to find the gondolas, but there seems to be a problem. They're not moving. You turn around to see a slightly greasy elf with a, <laughs> with a wrench uh, and a look of surprise. Sorry, I wasn't expecting anyone. The gondola lift isn't working right now. It'll still be a while before I can fix it. You offer to help. Wow, we're so we're so kind. Look at us. The engineer explains that an engine part seems to be missing from the engine, but nobody can figure out which one. If you can add up all the part numbers in the engine schematic, it should be easy to work out which part is missing. The engine schematic, your puzzle input, consists of a visual representation of the engine. There are lots of numbers and symbols you don't really understand, but apparently any number adjacent to a symbol, even diagonally, is a part number. That kind of sucks. Okay. Uh, and you should be included in your sum. Uh, periods do not count as a symbol. So what is the sum of all the parts in the engine schematic? Okay, I'm trying to think how we do this. Map this into just an array of arrays, then walk, find every star, and then read up and to the left, like read all the coordinates around it. But then how do I figure out what that number is? You know what I mean? Like if I go up, up one, left one, let's just do the basics real quick. Open, do sample.txt. And then this, this, is un, this is unused, but it's fine. We're good. The way that I'm going to attack this is every line parse out find a digit find four six seven create a list of structures that contains all the coordinates for this number and then when i hit a symbol walk that list and find if all of these coordinates are in that list struct number num i32 x i32 y32 vec of number good okay say for i c yeah is this legal yes oh that's so much better so we'll do not i c this will be i line and this will be y line yeah and then we'll do four x c in line dot cares dot enumerate okay this is much more rustly and this is also a lot prettier okay much better print the solutions so we'll have print line perfect Perfect. Okay, so now we're walking the whole input. So now I want to parse an int, parse i32. Like figure out what the number is, figure out all the coordinates that exist for that number. Let subline equal line of x dot dot. So we're gonna we're effectively walking to figure out if the current position is still a an int. No, but what we're gonna accidentally do then is insert multiple digits. So we print the subline if let sum num equal subline dot parse int into an i32 will be a u32 if let okay i'm just gonna print line wonderful so we got literally zero numbers out of this oh my god this sucks okay this is left x this is right x equal line dot len all left x is less than this and while right x is left uh, is greater than left x, right x equals one. Now it's left x equals one. So we'll do left x up to right x. Uh, found digit, found digit six seventeen. Perfect. And now we have to add r x plus equals subline dot len. No left x rather. It's left x. We're creating this nasty function, pretty much to find all the digits. This one did not find it. I got I to fix that logic here, but we found 617. Perfect. Found 467. Oh, I have to, I have to reset it to zero. 
rx equals zero. There we go. Or rx um, equals line dot len minus one. Yeah, that, that has to get set up here. Perfect. Let mute rx. Got it. Okay, this will this will find all the digits. We found all the digits. I just realized I don't need to track the coordinates, all, like a vector of the coordinates. I just need to track the length of the digit. So then if we're in here and we found a digit, number equal found dot push number, print line zero question mark. Yep, missing, missing. First of all, missing a, uh, a quote. Perfect. <sighs> okay, we're getting somewhere. So we have parsed every number in the field. We have a function that walks the list. It parses or walks the, the strings. It finds all the numbers that are in the list. So now we need to iterate over or find all the symbols. We'll do for y line in contents dot lines dot enumerate. Good. And then we'll do for x c in line dot chairs dot enumerate. We'll say if is symbol printf found a symbol print line. Sorry, guys. That's my old, uh, my old C brain run. Okay, cool. So we found this for every time we encounter a character, we're going to look over every symbol in the number table. It's so gross, dude. It's going to work, but it's like, it's disgusting. Let current X equal X plus DX minus one. Good. And let C uh, C Y equal Y plus D Y minus one. We're just going to say print line checking CX, CY. Okay, there we go. So now for num in found dot iter mute. So we need to walk over every vector and see if our current coordinates are within. So we have to check not only if we're on the, the same line as the number, not the Y, it's CY. And then if num dot X up to num dot X plus num.line. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, but it finds it multiple times. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. So we'll, we'll make a field. <laughs> this is so disgusting. Found true, or found false rather, and not num.found. Great, should find it one time. 664592. 6173547. Okay, great. So then we have to do a sum. I hope you guys heard my stomach. I'm so hungry right now. All right. Uh, let mute sum I30 or u32 equals zero. Sum plus equals num.num. Num. 2375. I think that's wrong. 20. Yeah. So that's incorrect. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Symbol this. We did not find 633. <sighs> okay. So there's, a, there's an issue with our algorithm we're not checking above ourselves it looks like that i forget to do the minus one on the on the y's oh interesting so if it's directly above or below us we're not finding that okay so let, let's check and see um if we actually have the right number so let, let's figure out where like 633 lives so a number 633 found false coordinate nine two so it's zero one two zero one two three four five six oh where does four, six, seven live three? Why am I getting the length of the number? Oh, it's LX. It's not Y. Yep. There we go. I'm adding the LX at the beginning and not the end. That was the issue. 4361, 4361. Okay, guys, here's the deal. This is where it gets hairy. So we have the solution for the sample. We're going to go download the actual, the actual thing. Part one is over. I mean, we'll see, dude. Oh, I have to actually change the input file. I'm like, oh, I got the same answer. No, dumbass. Dude, this is so slow. Oh my God. Look at this. I'm in a compiled language and it's taking a long fucking time. Too many prints. Okay, let's let's remove the prints and see. Uh, try to run it on the baby monitor. Yeah. Okay, that's much better. Whew. Dude, for a second, I thought my algorithm was that inefficient. I was like, holy shit. <sighs> my heart is racing right now, dude. Yeah, for, for the record, you guys are not getting brain fuck. You're going to give me a real programming language. Use the example and change the test. Yeah, 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 let's do that. So let's do sample.
vim sample.txt. And yeah, let's push this over one, go like that, boom. Oh, interesting, yeah, you're right. Why is that not working? Okay, let's debug that. The question is, is it in our number list? Is it even finding it? No, we're not. Oh, we found 63, that's why. Yeah, so it has to do with how we're slicing. Minus one, no. There we go, okay. That was a problem. The cl Fuck, dude. The classic off by one error just cost me my life. Dude, I... Mm. 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 That's on me. That's on me. I, I failed to do proper testing. Okay, so whew, I'm, I'm a little pissed off now. Oh my God. Let's get on to part two. Remember the negative one? We were all here. Negative ones in chat, guys. Negative ones. The engineer finds the missing part and installs it in the engine. Great. <laughs> Great. And the uh, engine springs to life. You jump in the closest gondola, finally ready to ascend to the water source. You don't seem to be going very fast, though. Maybe something is still wrong. Fortunately, the gondola has a phone labeled help, so you pick it up and the engineer answers. Before you can explain the situation, she suggests that you look out the window. There stands the engineer holding a phone in one hand and waving, excuse me, waving the other. You're going so slowly that you haven't even left the situation or the station you exit the gondola. The missing gear wasn't the only issue. One of the gears in the engine is wrong. A gear is any star symbol. Wait, wait, missing part was the only issue. One of the gears in the engine is wrong. A gear is any symbol that is adjacent to exactly two part numbers. Its gear ratio is the result of multiplying those two numbers together. This time you need to find the gear ratio of every gear and add them up to the engineer. Okay, so effectively it feels like find a symbol, how many things do I find, multiply them together. So here, the first in the top left is part next to four. Is it exactly two part numbers? Yeah. Four, six, seven, and three, five. So its gear ratio is this. Second gear is in the lower right. It's next to seven, five, 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 nine, eight. Yeah, we're deciding the fate after I finish part two, guys. Okay, so yeah, like luckily I did a decent job of cataloging all the numbers. So now all we have to do is for every digit that we find, found nums equal, which is a vector of numbers equals vec new, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of this, we're going to say num.found equals true, found num num, and we're going to say um, found nums.push num.clone cannot borrow found nums as mutable, let mute found nums. At the end of this, per symbol, if we have found, oh, this is so bad, look at all this indentation, dude, holy shit. If found nums dot len equals two, we'll just say that we found a gear. Let first equal found nums dot first. Hey, let second equal found, yeah, let's do last, perfect. Okay, and we'll do let ratio equal first dot num times second dot num dot unwrap. Okay, here we go. Uh, 467835, 467835. Okay, guys, I think this is, I think we're good. And I'm at no risk of brute forcing at this point because I've already failed. So, <laughs> it's a big ass number. Let's see if we get it. Let's go. All right, I've redeemed myself. All right, chat, here's the deal. What we're doing is we are replacing Rust with a language of chat's choosing. Now, let me be very clear. It, I am not putting brain fuck on this wheel. It is not happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a poll in chat. I've made a poll where we're choosing between Elixir, Haskell, OCaml, and Lua. <sighs> Dude, if, if, if Haskell wins, I'm fucked. I'm fucked, dear God. Okay, all right, Haskell it is. If Haskell gets on this list, I am fucked. I'm gonna be here for hours and I have to go to work. I have like a, so on the weekends, like it's okay because I can sit here all day and stuff. Um, but like during the weekdays, I got up at five to do this. I have to go to work at eight. 